1,500 years before the discovery of America, the Chinese built one of the wonders of the world, the Great Wall. Built it to keep out their barbarian enemies. Built it with bare hands, stones, yellow clay, mud, and patience. Today, China builds again. Not a great wall, but a great floor. This Chinese child is building an airfield for our B-29s and other super bombers, helping in the destruction of the barbarians of today, Japan. This child, his mother, his nine-year-old sister, his father, and a half million other small people working with the tools of their ancestors are now hacking out a vast system of super airfields. In America, the super bombers and all the thousands of parts that go into their construction are being made, sub-assembled, assembled and flown to China with all possible speed. In China, we had to have special airfields. There was no machinery, only people. Here are those people taking just one month to grind out a modern miracle without modern equipment. Directed by a handful of American Army engineers, 72,000 Chinese men, women, and children are working on this one field at one time. They come from all the neighboring villages, rice farmers bringing their own homemade equipment, wheelbarrows, bamboo poles, straw baskets, and a burning will to work. Yes, these are the people whose families were bayoneted and burned alive whose wives and daughters and mothers were raped by the Jap invaders. They know the sooner this and the other great fields are finished, the faster we will be able to make the Japs and their leaders pay for their crimes. Not enough bulldozers in China, so these workers dig up the good earth by hand and cart it away on their backs. Not enough concrete mixers, not enough cement, so they surface the fields by hand setting stones into an immense tile floor. Long enough, broad enough, strong enough for our super bombers to take off for Tokyo and land again. These patient people have been fighting the Axis partner of the Nazis longer than any nation on earth. With muddy water, riverbed stones, and an ancient song, they courageously farm their old rice fields for a new crop a crop of justice against brutality, treachery, and murder. Here is the great floor and all its enormity. The impossible is finished in record time in only 27 days. 27 days to change acres of water-filled rice paddies into miles of fast, hard flooring for super bomber wheels. These are our allies, the people of China. Building an airfield, the area of 30 football fields with little more than the strength of their backs. A super field rolled and hardened with a 10-ton cable reel drawn by thousands of men pulling together. A great floor from which our fast-growing flocks of super bombers will smash the heart of Japan. For them and for us. Troopers, cloud hoppers, sky guys. No feathers on these warbirds, no wings on these angels, but they're terrific on the flying tackle. This job is top secret. We're taking off from an American airfield somewhere in Europe. Where we're flying to is secret, but what we're flying in is not. 
these beautiful planes looking like giant seagulls in the morning sky are C-47s, paratroop planes. The workers back home who shaped and forged the precision parts, the motors that drive these planes, can never have pictured them on a mission as magnificently large scale as this. We're nearing DP, drop point, coming close to our unnamed destination. When the jump signal is given, these boys will take that first big step down. In no other war have soldiers been called on to fight like this. But some of them will die in the same way that soldiers have always died. The secret operation is a secret no longer. This is the beginning of the liberation of southern France. The victorious drive that blasted the Nazis from Marseille and Toulon started with the American sky troops in that field below. Suppose you had helped take back Chicago, or Detroit, or Pittsburgh, or San Francisco, or Dayton from the Japs. We did win back a piece of America this summer. We, all of us, our Marines and infantry doughboys, our sailors and flyers, and another group, our millions of home front war workers. Yes, we won back and came back to Guam. A sand-swept pencil dot on the Pacific, but as much America as our great cities or the plains of Kansas. Guam, the first American soil the Japs stole from us, three days after Pearl Harbor. For two and a half years, Guam's radio was silent. Then we launched a wave of precision earthquakes made in America to free this far off American soil. We were coming back and we were making no secret about it. we squatted in the gray sea and announced our arrival with a crescendo that rose on D-Day minus one to 25 tons of bombs an hour. Then, like a flock of comets, our Amtrak streaked to shore, pacing the attack. Their course was as swift and sure as the course of our shells that kept sending Jap hopes up in smoke. Our landing parties flowed ashore, backed up by materiel made in who knows how many American cities. Weapons and equipment which might have delivered blows at Marseille or Michigan, but many months before were earmarked Guam. Watch this direct hit by a Jap shell. Our men were proud of this job. Well, they knew they were going to free not another exotic Pacific shore, but an American outpost, built and lived in by Americans, and for which fellow Americans had sacrificed their lives. Our dive bombers zoomed overhead, neutralizing Jap installations. This was the same feverish swampland we had plowed through in other islands. This was ours. This was part of America. And there was heart as well as muscle behind every shot we fired here. Ship to shore 
shelling and aerial bombardment had blasted almost all the Jap defenses. But there was still mopping up to be done. We had to hunt down the remaining Japs, smoke them out, one by one. Japs held on with their suicide stands, which we must always expect. We went into the caves after them, on this island that looked like Saipan, and smelled like Tarawa. An American soldier felled by a Jap sniper. It was to take almost three more weeks of this before the last Jap was ferreted out of Guam. And a thousand Americans died on this distant plot of American soil. We massed the Long Toms for one final drive. They blasted the enemy north to the hills. They shook the earth with anger. It was the roar of these big guns which quieted all Jap resistance. years ago. July 25th, 1944, Guam spoke triumphantly to the world again. This news is from Radio Guam. Nothing heard from you since 1941. Greetings.